Hello everyone, my name is Poti and I'm your Centurion Gate Motor Expert. So we, today we're going to install an older Centurion D5 sliding gate motor. And we're going to run you through the installation and show you what we need to look at and where we need to look at things to assist you in installing your Centurion gate motor. These installations are all the same whether it's a Jira Slide, an Expert, a Hansa, Centurion, Gemini, doesn't matter. The basic stays the same. The installation methods and ways stays the same. It's the internal parts of the gate motors that are different. But yeah, please enjoy this video. Subscribe, like it, share it as much as possible so that we can grow the channel. And uh, if you've got any comments, Please list them. Thanks. Stay tuned. The first aspect that we are looking at is that the steel sliding gate is free running. Obviously, sliding gates normally slides into gate guides at the front, which keeps the gate in place. These guide brackets should not cause a obstruction in the movement of the steel sliding gate. The next aspect we will be looking at is the gate roller guide system. Both guides should be free running as well. It should not be pinching the steel sliding gate and there should not be any excessive distance between the roller and the gate. Next up is the steel gate wheels. You they need come to check in different sizes. Both. Steel 40 millimeter wheels up to 100 for millimeter proper operation in a round or V shaped type wheel is to lift the steel sliding gate and spin the wheels in either direction. They must be free running forward and backwards. There should be no sideways play or no up and down play of the steel sliding gate wheel. We have a free running gate system which is perfect for automating. The red cross marks the spot where we will be supplying our gate motor with power from an electrical plug point. So when we look at fitting the electrical supply cable to the gate motor, we do not want any obstructions and it needs to look nice, neat and tidy. And in this instance, where the electrical cable is quite far from the gate motor, one would need to open the concrete and bury the new electrical wire in a pipe underneath the ground. So we have various options to choose what we want to do with the electrical supply cable in order to assist us with the gate motor installation. So X marks the spot. That's where our electrical supply cable hole will be drilled through from the inside of the wall outwards. We use different steel bases to assist with our gate motor installations. We, you can either use a 76 by 38 millimeter steel base.
or a completely flat 4 millimeter steel base. Or a 76 by 76 square tubing base. This allows you to create a platform in order to mount your gate motor onto and when you weld it down. We have found that by creating a level platform out of steel is much easier in the whole installation process. It allows one to assemble the gate motor completely and then move the gate motor to the correct position and distance from the steel sliding gate. It then allows one to line up the gate motor completely parallel to the steel sliding gate. It then allows one to weld the steel base plate of the gate motor down onto the supporting platform. We have our steel base plate where we, which we need to mount and we need to get it straight and level. Obviously we can see that the concrete is not cast at level and we need to do some preparation on that before we can proceed. So we will mark the steel base plate circumference off and mark where we want the electrical cable and we'll start off with that first before doing anything else. So at this point, we've routed the electrical cable through a conduit pipe underneath the steel gate rail. The steel base plate has been welded down and secured with roll bolts, which have also been welded down. So unbolting of the steel base plate is not possible. You would need to cut it off. Three steel bolts are provided with six steel nuts, six washers and three spring washers. It is paramount that all of these bolts and washers be used when assembling the gate motor. Firstly, the steel bolts are screwed in from the bottom section of the steel base plate. It is then secured with a 17 millimeter spanner. And secured with a 17 millimeter spanner. Three washers are then placed onto the steel base plate where the steel nuts and washers and steel bolts in place. It is time to fit the gate motor onto the steel base plate. You will see that the gate motor will slide onto it easily without any hassles. A earth wire is placed on either of the steel bolts. Then steel washers are placed onto the steel bolts 
spring washers. And then lastly, the steel nuts. The steel nuts are then secured down completely with a 17 size spanner. If the gate motor is not 100% aligned with a steel sliding gate, one can still adjust the gate motor in order for it to be parallel to the steel sliding gate. One can also still move the gate motor forward and backwards in order not to cause an obstruction onto the steel sliding gate. With this gate motor properly secured down, welded into place, everything is fine, all bolts are tightened, one can then put the cover plates onto the gate motor base, which then hides the steel bolts. It also prevents lizards and mice entering the gate motor through these vents. The other side, you will see that the holes are different on each side, so the one cover plate cannot be mistakenly placed on the wrong side. There you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Now it must be noted, we stay in Africa and because of that we need to bring in angle irons which is cut and then placed over the bolts and then welded to the steel base plate in order to prevent your gate motor from growing legs and walking off. So right, here we can see the steel base plate has been mounted properly into the ground, it's secured. Now it's time to secure your gate motor to the steel base plate. The gate motor needs to be level in an upright position. It should not lean to the left or to the right. You can see this one is obviously clearly level as it should be. Let's move the camera. In this way, fitting a steel base plate, assembling the steel gate motor onto its steel base plate allows one to move the gate motor into position. It allows you to line the gate motor up parallel with the steel sliding gate. It allows you to make sure that All moving parts can pass the gate motor and not be an obstruction for the operation of the gate motor. Here we can see that the gate motor has been spot welded into place. This allows one to move the gate motor forward and backwards to make sure that it's standing properly upright. One needs to be well versed in the art of welding. One cannot just spot weld the gate motor in place. One needs to weld it properly in place.
one can see that this steel base plate is welded down properly. Steel gate rail is preferred above any plastic rail currently on the market, especially in the South African sun. So the two links, two meter links, needs to be joined together, welded. We're now going to fit the origin mark onto the steel sliding gate. Centurion Systems requires that the origin marker is placed at least 500 millimeters away from the mag switch reader, which is on the front left side of the skate motor. Make sure that the origin marker is fitted properly onto the steel sliding gate. The arrow is pointing towards the gate motor. Origin marker needs to be within range of the mag switch reader. And it must not cause the obstruction in the operation of the steel sliding gate. Check that the battery charging voltage is correct at 13.89 volts DC. Right, in order to program this gate motor, we need to open the gate to the halfway position and then place it in gear. So to place this gate motor in gear, we unscrew it. If it goes too far, it's not the end of the world. Pull the gate slowly and the clicking noise is heard. The gate motor is now in gear. In order to program the D5 
controller card. One needs to fit the set pin. Then connect power onto the DC plug. And then the gate motor battery. The controller card needs to boot up from no power in order to allow you to go into programming. Right, if we can see the set link has been fitted. DC plug is going in. Charge light is coming on at the back. You fit the battery terminal. Right. We are now going to program the D5 controller card. We're going to press the test button once until L1 flashes once. Okay. We are now going to program this D5 EVO controller card. The set link has been fitted onto the two pins. The set light is on. L2 is constantly illuminated. We are now going to press the test button once until L1 illuminates once. One will see that L1 is flashing once every one second. We are going to press the test button again. There is another LED light until it comes on. The status light comes on. As soon as you leave the test button, the gate will start moving slowly. The gate motor will run slowly until it reaches the rear end stop. Then it will stop and reverse. Then it will again close slowly until it reaches the front end stop. Gate motor will then Continue to reopen again. When it reaches the, the open end stop, the gate motor will speed up and close at full speed until it reaches the front end stop. Slowing down is due to the fact that the origin marker has been detected. The gate motor will open up to the pedestrian size of the gate and then stop. What is now very important is that one, press the test button once in order to exit programming. There L2 comes on. The gate motor has been programmed, which means this one can now remove the set link and test the gate motor. So how to program a Sherlo remote receiver card, you've connected it to power already and you want to make sure that the memory is clear, what you're going to do is you're going to press and hold the program button, hold it, until you've got a constant buzzing.
now the receiver is memory has been erased so we're going to program a shallow remote transmitter to this receiver you need to press the program button once and then press your remote three times once twice three times but the receiver is still in programming mode you need to press the programming button once to get out of programming that is to prevent other remotes in the area from being programmed onto the same receiver card So you've done the programming on the gate motor, limits has been set, now test your gate motor. Press your remote, compress it again. This gate motor is set on reversing, which means as for a action, the gate will stop and reverse. now stop and reverse and close if I press it again it will stop and reopen auto close has been disabled on this gate motor And we're not going to wait until it eventually closes because it cannot close because the auto close function has been disabled. Right, take a close look at the origin marker passing gate by the gate motor. All set and done.